381. <clears throat> okay, this one I think uh, Sandra's going to sit out on this one because she's she's not had a chance to get it in a key that uh, she likes to play it in so we'll have to do a cappella tonight on this one i have a home beyond the river oh the blessed contemplation when with trouble here i sigh i've a home beyond the river that I'll enter by and by. I've a home beyond the river. I've a mansion bright and fair. I've a home beyond the river. I will dwell with Jesus there. Just a little more to labor, tell the story, watch and pray. Just a few more earthly sorrows, then to heaven we'll fly away. I've a home beyond the river. I've a mansion bright and fair. I've a home beyond the river. I will dwell with Jesus there. Oh, how sweet twill be to meet them. All the ransomed host above, sweeter still to see the Savior, praise Him for redeeming love. I've a home beyond the river, I've a mansion bright and fair, I've a home beyond the river. I will dwell with Jesus there. Though the world is filled with sorrow, and the teardrops often fall, there will be but joy and gladness safe inside the jasper wall. I've a home beyond the river. I've a mansion bright and fair. I've a home beyond the river. I will dwell with Jesus there. Though the hills are rough and stony, and the valleys dark and cold, I must walk the path before me. It will someday turn to gold. I've a home beyond the river. I've a mansion bright and fair. I've a home beyond the river. I will dwell with Jesus there. I'm going to look forward to the gold, I guess, that we might be able to see. The gold there. Kind of like, did anybody see the gold on our uh, bulletin this morning? All the gold on there. Hmm.
I don't know where the Lord wants to carry me here, but lots of things going on in my in my mind. Um, just thinking about those uh, young men that Brother Kurt and I uh, visited with, and uh, they are they're perishing. They're perishing, and uh, uh, I think Brother Kurt and I felt inadequate at different times. Uh, all the scriptures that were going through my mind, and all the scriptures going, you can't hear. You might need to turn it up a little bit if it goes if it go up. Can you hear there? Is that better? Okay, I thought it was a little low too. Um, just lots of scripture going through uh, my mind, and I know Brother Kurt's mind, and and being able to try and put all those things together and find your place with what you want to share with these uh, young men, uh, it's, it's oftentimes can be difficult. Difficult to find the, that exact place. So, um, without a doubt, the Lord took us there. That was the third place that we actually uh, visited with somebody. And, you know, I felt that Brother Kurt and I shared the truth of the Word of God as God had revealed it to us. And even some hard things uh, with those young men. We talked about being a Christian and cults. And uh, the one fellow going to the Mormon church uh, readily understood that many people call the Mormon church a cult. And uh, wanted to say that he was a Christian just like we're Christians. And, and we said, you can't. You're not, you're not a Christian as the Bible says what a Christian is. And those are hard things, aren't they? And... Not only the hard thing of that, but the hard thing that the challenge of when you, if you were to die today, what's going to happen to you? And without a doubt, without a doubt with where those two men stood, if anything were to happen to them, they would not be with where we were singing about right here. They would not be there. But they would be separated from God forever. And... You know, as Kurt and I had to share the truth of hell, the truth of heaven with them, that oftentimes isn't a popular thing to share with people, but being able to end that and tell them that the reason why we're here at your door is because we love you. Even though we have to share things that are hard in God's word, we love you and we want you to come to know what we know about Jesus Christ. I think the one fellow asked, well, you know, why? What's the, what's the center? Or what, you know, why would you want to be a, a Christian or to be saved? And, and Brother Kurt came back and said, you know, it evolves around a person. And I, and I could, you know, he didn't say this, but I know that this was his heart. The person is my Jesus that I know personally, that we want you to know. And we want you to be where we are. That one part of that song was, was talking about those others that will be there when we're there together. But not only them, more importantly, there's Jesus. There's Jesus to be there. And, and Brother Kurt answered that very... Uh, couldn't have said anything better to that sinner and, and trying to point them to that personal relationship with the Savior. But I just do ask you that you continue to pray again uh, every place that we went to today, I don't believe there was one person that understood and had salvation in the Lord. Again, a little speck that we've gotten in Powell, Wyoming, that the majority are unbelievers. And there's a whole big city. Not really a big city, but a small city. But I think that's going to compound itself as we move about. And be, be praying for the gospel light to go forth. Open hearts to receive the Lord. And I, I appreciate the song, Rescue the Perishing, as well. Rescue the Perishing. That's what's happening. These young men right there before us were perishing. They needed the Lord. Well, let's finish up 1 Corinthians right tonight. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Finishing up 1 Corinthians. Tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Can anybody say that? Thank you, Jesus, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, that you've got us here. Finishing it up. 
We're going to finish up the challenge that we've been looking at the last couple weeks. The challenge for the Christian warrior. You and I are the Christian warriors. And the challenge is us for being the soldiers of the cross that Jesus has designed us to be. That's what we need to be. Christian soldiers. And we already looked at the first part of the challenge. Well, let me read the verse. It's verse 13. That's the end of what we're going to end with. Watch ye, stand fast in faith. Quit ye like men and be strong. I hope these words will just keep going on and on in our hearts, in our minds. We already looked at watch ye, which meant be vigilant. Be vigilant. And we had the picture of what uh, Canon Garbett had said and gave us an illustration of kind of a, a fight that was getting ready to, to happen to, between military men. And that watch ye was that place where those men, the opposing army, was just below the hill. Couldn't quite see him, knew that they were there, and they could break that hill at any moment in time and begin to launch the attack that was going to happen between the two armies. So he said, be vigilant, watch ye. And we talked about three things with that, that we need to watch over our intellect, we need to watch over our heart, and we need to watch over our spiritual lives. And then we went into the, the next part where it was stand fast in the faith. We looked at that uh, last week. And that was that part where, uh, give you that example where uh, this Canon Garbett had uh, gave the illustration. I want to read it again after he went on to, to stand fast. He said, as the tide of the, war, of the war rolls its threatening masses onward, and the advancing column of the enemy, grim and ominous as a thundercloud, threatens to overwhelm the slender line of the defenders, the leader's clear voice is heard in some momentary hush of suspense, exhorting them to steadiness and constancy, to stand fast in the faith. And that's what we looked at last Sunday evening, to stand fast in your faith. And in that standing fast, we learned that we need to stand fast in the one and true living God. And secondly, to be firm in our faith that Christ is the only sufficient Savior. He is the only sufficient Savior. And then to stand fast that the Scriptures are the only sufficient rule of faith and practice in our lives. And I have to tell you without a doubt, when Brother Kurt and I were in that apartment complex today, sitting with two young men that were so gracious enough to bring us a chair over to sit down amongst them. And the chair even had some padding on it that made it a little bit nicer for the time. As we're sitting right amongst them, we were challenged with the one true God that the Bible speaks about. And we had to be prepared to defend the one true God that the Scripture talks about. Not gods, but God of the Scripture and who He truly is. And then secondly, I saw that we had to stand fast in our defense of who the sufficient Savior is. He's not Satan's brother. He is God. Fully God and fully man. That's who He is. We had to defend that. We had to stand in that. And not only that, but the Scriptures are the only sufficient rule of our faith. We were challenged with, challenged with. I, I, I got to tell you that, well, I challenged the one, the Mo, one Mormon uh, fella with reading the Bible. And I challenged him with the King James Version because they hold to the King James Version of the Bible. And the King James, as we learned today, I didn't know this, I did learn a little bit more here, that in the... Mormon Bible that they have are there all some of their scriptures. As it looks like there's some of the Book of Mormon. In the middle is the King James Version of the Bible. And then they end it kind of with the Book of Mormon. So they've placed the King James Version of the Bible right in the middle. I think if you've looked at when they come door to door before, anymore I've noticed the two missionaries that come around, they don't have the, the Bible, it doesn't look like, but they have it on the iPad. They're carrying the iPad around with them. But if you remember the day when they carried the actual, their, their scriptures in, it was a lot thicker than what we have right here. And that's the reason behind it in the, in the very middle of it is the KJV Bible. 
So we had to defend that the word of God that we had right here was the true word of God when they were telling us that it was, it contradicted itself. And he had some examples where he could bring out contradictions, but it was exactly what we learned in Sunday school as we've been looking at the doctrine of the Bible, that you can't take one isolated passage of Scripture without understanding the whole of what God is saying about it. And they wanted to take bits and pieces out of isolated portions to develop that the Bible that we hold here right now contradicts itself. Well, I challenge the young man to read the King James Bible that he has in the middle of his Book of Mormon. And to see, as he read it, if the Book of Mormon would stand the test of what it says. And we know without a doubt that it's not going to. And he said, I'll do that, but I'm going to challenge you too. I'm going to challenge you to read the Book of Mormon. And after you finish reading the Book of Mormon, and I've finished reading the uh, King James Bible, we can meet up again. And I had to tell him that I've already had that challenge before. I've already faced that challenge before. And I said I, I was going to take up that challenge, but then I had the wisdom of my wife that came along and said, you don't want to entertain that because the Bible says anything outside the Word of God right here is false. And He will add to you the plagues that are contained in the Scripture. So, the command to us are pretty high, not even to entertain it and don't even look at it. It's false. So kind of hard to try and reason with him through it. And, and there was more for me to lose in reading it than for him because he was already saying that the King James Bible was a part of his Bible that he had. But all he had to do is read it. And he said, I, I haven't read it from the beginning to the end of that. Nor have I read the Book of Mormon from the beginning to the end, he said also. So he's relying and basing his whole faith on what a, a lot of people have said to him, not based on the truth. Brother Kurt and I were right here, standing fast in the faith this afternoon. And we go on to the next thing here that we learn, and that's to quit you like men. That's the... The third thing with the challenge, quit you like men. It, it means, I'll put it in our terms for today, man up. My wife's pretty good at that one, I think. Come on, man up. I've been there. I've dealt with that. It's time for you to get a backbone. Come on and man up. It's time for some manliness or womanness, humanness in your life. Come on. you got to get a backbone here. You see? We got to the point in this, what uh, Cannon was sharing with us, that uh, they've come over the hill. They're advancing the line. Well, this man up part is a place where they both hit. The battle's on. It's going. And it's time to be a man. Because you're going to have to be a man or a strong woman to endure what's ahead here in this battle. We've got to man up. Manliness. And what we see in it, I think if we really break up the word, quit you like men, I'm going to give us three things to consider in the battle when we man up. And the first thing is uprightness of character in our lives. Think of a man in battle, maybe in the time that when people would go, you know, I've often wondered that. It's, it's been a crazy thing, you know. You see it, how people go to war. And you have one army here and you have another army here and they go into battle knowing that there are people that are going to die. And one of them's outgunned, outarmed, and they still go and they clash and they meet in the middle, don't they? They're moving across the field. They know it's getting close. And here they go. They're entwined in the battle. And I'm thinking there's got to be a different way of doing battle than just going running out right there in the middle of the field and taking it on one with another. Well, we learn new tactics. There, there are a few different tactics that we use today, but if you think of that same, we're not, we're, what we're doing in this world in our battle, 
we're coming right into the battle. We're coming right into it with the world. We're coming right into it with Satan. We're coming right into it with your own flesh. Aren't you? We're right there. We've hit kind of just like a, you know, waves, two, two waves colliding together. Boom. Here we are in the battle. But it requires us to be upright. Isn't it amazing how God created man to be upright? He created animals, not necessarily, maybe some to be upright, but man has been created upright to show the character that we're to have. We're to have upright, we're to be upright in character, our men, aren't we? And to stand in that uprightness. You see, when we get into the battle here, Lee will know this from some of the fighting stances and stuff that we, we taught out on our range and stuff when I was in that law enforcement side, but when you're in battle and you're in the fight, there's generally a stance that men and women will take. And it's the fighting stance. When feet are shoulder width apart, you're bent over just a little bit. You know, kind of like a boxer, right? Isn't that what a boxer does? He's kind of bent over like this. He's ready. He's got his center of gravity. That's how men do when they come into battle and they come together. But they're still upright, aren't they? They're ready for the battle. They're bracing themselves. Here it is. We've got to have in this battle... We've got to have uprightness of character. Uprightness of character. Not only that, this manliness or manning up includes the truth. And I think if in battle, what's the piece of truth that we need? What's it called? What's the armor called? The piece of armor called that talks about truth. What is it? The belt of truth. You got the belt of truth. What's the only what's the only weapon that you use that's offensive in our war? What is it? The Bible. The sword of the spirit, isn't it? As we fight for truth, right? We got our armor on. Well, we only got one offensive weapon, and that that's the word of God, isn't it? God's word. Brother Kurt and I, I, I saw it too. Not only were we to stand fast today, but we were in the battle. We were in a spiritual battle in that apartment with false doctrine, false teaching, false words, things that weren't right. And we only had one weapon. What, and you know, we did. One weapon. Brother Kurt and I, I had my Bible, and I used my Bible for a while, and then I had to give Brother Kurt the sword for a little bit. And then I would take the sword, and then Brother Kurt had the, I think Brother Kurt ended with the sword. He ended with the sword there. But we had it. We needed it for battle. Truth. It had to be the truth of God's Word in the battle. And then there's the last, the last, the third thing I want to see with the manning up. Not only to having the sure stance and uprightness of character in our lives and the truth, keeping the sword to deliver the truth, but it's that of courage. Courage. You know, I think, I'm thinking of the picture in my mind of these two armies meeting. And you know you're going out there and you're going to die. And you're going to meet, or you have a chance of dying. Why on earth would you choose to go out there and meet those men? Why wouldn't you hightail it somewhere else? <laughs> right? I mean, come on! Aren't you a little smarter than that? Well, they do. They go right out. They, you need that courage, don't you? You've got to have that courage to go out there and and face death. You see, that's what manning up for us as Christians is. And I, I think Sandy talked about it just a little bit with those that are being persecuted in her testimony here tonight. That's terrible, isn't it? All those things that were going on. We see this courage that you and I are going to need in the battle is the boldness to enter the lion's den. The boldness to enter the lion's den rather than deny Jesus Christ as our Savior. Are you willing in the battle? Do you got the courage to enter the lion's den and die for your faith and not deny your Lord? You know, we don't have to think uh, back very far to remember Daniel, who actually was in the lion's den, wasn't he? 
And God closed their mouths, didn't He? And He delivered him out of that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace standing for, their, standing for the faith. John the Baptist beheaded for his faith, wasn't he? John boiled in the vat of oil for his faith. Peter and Paul died for their faith. That's that courage that we need right there to man up that God can give when we're in the battle. You see, what Sandy shared, we don't face that every day right here. But we don't know, we don't know when that time's going to change for us right here. And we're going to have to be involved just like those people are involved for our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you willing to enter the lion's den rather than deny your God? I hope in that day and that hour as it comes that God gives me that courage that I need to do that for my God. And then the last thing, the last thing of the challenge is to be strong. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, in the faith. quit you like men, you know what that manliness is, or manning up, and now be strong. Be strong. It means true and manly vigor to be strong. You see, this is that strength this is great strength. This is the great strength that we know that the men in the Bible have gone on before us. If you read Hebrews 11, the great faith chapter, we see great men of God that were strong in the Lord and have set an example for us with their life, haven't they? The great men, this manly vigor that they had, you see, there's only, we talked about intellectual pursuit with Solomon last week. Intellectual, people that are intellectual are smart, really smart. I, you know, my photographic memories and all those types of this. Just men and women that are just smart, you know. That's a, that's a small amount of people that actually have that intellect like that. I, I call myself just an average what did you say this morning, Shelly? You said something about us being just, do you remember? <laughs> no, she shakes her head, no. We're just, we're just average people here in a little church in Powell, Wyoming, Charity Baptist Church that love one another. Not any great, marvelous, intellectual minds like you, we might say that, you know, an Einstein, Right? One that has a mind like that. Not all of us have it, but as we look at this being strong and this true manly vigor, you know, great spiritual might is available for every one of us that calls ourselves a Christian. Every one of us that's a Christian, we have available to us great spiritual might. Great spirit. We all can't be intellectual. We all can't have that great mind like that. But every one of us that's here that is a Christian, we can have this great spiritual might. You know, I want to talk about a couple areas of having this some great spiritual might that we're going to have to have. To be strong means that we need to be men and women of strong conviction. Strong conviction. You see, as we read the Word of God, and God reveals who He is to us in our lives, we begin to have convictions about the Word of God and the truth of the Word of God in our lives. And we've got to be strong in those convictions. I'm not talking about maybe a liberty area or some area, but strong, true convictions on the truth of God's Word. There was some true, strong conviction that Brother Kurt and I needed when we were in that house today. And that was when those men asked me, are you sure if you die today, 
What's going to happen to you? And without a doubt in my mind, without a doubt whatsoever, I can respond and say, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There's no doubt in my mind to die right now will be in the presence of the Lord the next minute. Strong conviction about God's Word in our life. You see what's going to happen to you and I as the enemy comes, as the world comes, as your flesh comes, as Satan comes. They want to take the strong convictions in your life and get rid of it. I don't want you to have strong conviction in your life. But He, our God, wants us to be strong in conviction. But also strong in love. Strong in love. The verse right after here, right after it says be strong, it says let all your things be done with charity, with love. As we went to the house today with these men, I wanted to be strong in conviction and strong in the truth of the Word of God and not deviate from what that truth said. But in that, we still have to be strong in love, don't we? And that's what I, we tried to end with with these men, that we love you. And the reason that we're here is because there's perishing. You're perishing. And God has given you an avenue. He's given you the way of escape. And it's through Him. And come! Come to Him. Come to believe in Him. You see, if we didn't love them, would we go out there? We wouldn't. Why would we go door to door if we didn't care and we didn't love those that are out there because they're perishing? God's put the love in our heart to be strong in love, right? Because they're perishing. And then to be strong in will. In will. And I don't want to say your will, but strong in God's will. See, you have a will, and our will can be pretty strong, can't it? But I'm thinking of that sword from that manliness and that courage. You know, we are to uh, be upright. We're to have that sword. But you know that, that sword against you and I, as Colossians tells us, that you are to kill the old man. You're to turn that sword, you're to turn it on that old man that's inside you, aren't you? You're to crucify that old man. Mortify the works of the flesh, the Bible says, doesn't it? Kill the old man that's in you. Strong in God's will, but not in our will. The will that God has for us. But you know, that's the will that keeps us from corruption. That keeps us from those sins that be so easily beset us. Those temptations that are out there being strong in will. Be strong. And I want you to remember this again. We all can't be intellectual and smart. But we have at our disposal a strength in the Lord that's beyond anything else. And you know, there's a lot of us that we're not entering in to that strength that the Lord has for us in our lives. Lord, help us. I say, Lord, help us. As we end 1 Corinthians, God, help us to be your warrior. Help us to be your soldier. Help us to watch and be vigilant. Help us to stand fast in the faith. Help us to quit you like men and man up. And help us to be strong, O oh Lord. Help us to be strong with your strength and your might. And that Brother Kurt said that as we're walking away from this apartment today, we don't have any strength. But God, working through us, 
has the strength and the power to change lives. We know firsthand because God changed your life. He came to you right where you were and made you a new person in Him. That's what we want. That's what we want to see is you and I are men and women fighting together. Help us to stand. Help us to be strong. And you know, we get that one and another too, don't we? With each other. Right here. That's what we're doing right here too. Strengthening one another up. God help us. Be with us. To be your warriors where you have placed us. We're all in a different place that He's placed us. To be just that. For Him. For Him. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for Your words tonight. I thank You as we end. You end us, Lord, strong in the book of Corinthians to the challenge to be the warriors that You've designed us to be, Lord. And we can't be these warriors without You and Your might and Your strength and Your direction in our lives, Lord. We have to surrender ourselves unto You in every area. God, help us to be vigilant and to watch. The enemy's out there just getting ready to crest the hill. And Lord, help us to stand fast in the faith. Lord, the enemy's advancing. The enemy's advancing in many ways in areas around us. And Lord, help us to quit you like men. Help us to man up and get a backbone like Shelley says. She tells me that, Lord. We need to do that in our life. And it's true. The Lord, the battle is hitting. Brother Kurt and I were there today. And Lord, there comes a point in that battle where we see people falling off the line all around us. But you call us to be strong. Right there, you give us that last little bit of energy and strength that we need to continue on in the battle. Lord, we ask you to give us that strength that we need that can only come from you. And we all have access to it, Lord. We just aren't taking part of it. Help us to do that. Lord God, give us just this week a good week in you. As we look to you, as we seek you, Lord as we have devotions with You, as we fellowship one with another, as You open up opportunities, Lord, for us to be with our families and those that are around us. Lord, help us to be like our Lord Jesus Christ who said, You should have known that I was about my Father's business. Help us to be about our Father's business, doing His work. Lord, bless each one. Lord, for those that aren't here and gathered with us tonight, Lord, be with them in a very special way. Lord, we love them. Those that would be with us, Lord, over the internet, Lord, through our stream. Father, be with them in a great and powerful, mighty way. Encourage each one, Lord, tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.